And now a story that seems lifted from science fiction. Researchers, many here in California, are trying to bring back extinct species. Everything from the woolly mammoth to the passenger pigeon, which was once the most abundant bird in the world. Bringing species back might be a way to correct past mistakes and even to help endangered animals. But just because we can, should we? I'll be right back. Sarah, no, no! The clone dinosaurs of the Jurassic Park movies captured viewers' imaginations. But 65 million years after their extinction, there's no chance scientists can bring dinosaurs back, says University of California Santa Cruz biologist Beth Shapiro. Jurassic Park is a fantasy and always will be. Dinosaurs are way too old to think that we're going to be able to recover genetic material. Instead, scientists are focusing on species that went extinct more recently. Researchers have already revived one extinct animal. The last of a type of mountain goat was cloned in Spain in 2003. But the clone only lived a few minutes. Here in the U.S., George Church from Harvard Medical School is engineering elephant cells with thicker hair and a fatty layer to make them more like woolly mammoths. His hope is that these new mammoths could help keep the Arctic from melting. Scientists believe that grazing by herbivores like mammoths strengthened the grass that grew on top of the permafrost and protected it from the sun. The mammoths may have had a big role in maintaining the grass that stabilized the ice, which contains more carbon in it, as in global warming carbon, than all of the rainforests put together times two. The same genetic engineering technology could one day make it possible to bring back other extinct animals. At UC Santa Cruz, 27-year-old Ben Novak is working to de-extinct the passenger pigeon. In the early 1800s, there were five billion of these birds just in the United States. Within the span of about 50 years, they go extinct. Not to be confused with domesticated carrier pigeons, passenger pigeons were wild birds that migrated through the eastern and central U.S. and Canada. You had these giant flocks of birds, so dense that with a single shot, you could take down dozens of them. Shipped by the trainloads to feed hungry cities, the passenger pigeon went extinct in 1914. Novak plans to genetically engineer its closest relative, the band-tailed pigeon. He would insert genes he obtained from passenger pigeon museum specimens. These genes would, for example, replace band-tailed pigeon square tails with the long tail and swift wings that allowed passenger pigeons to fly at 60 miles per hour. Hey, Ben. Hey. hey how you doing? Ryan Phelan and Stuart Brand's nonprofit, Revive and Restore in Sausalito, is funding Novak's work. You seen this cool thing? Brand is best known for his Whole Earth catalog. Started in 1968, it encouraged readers to live in tune with nature. Today, Brand hopes to excite a new generation. Do you want extinct species back? Do you want extinct species back? Yeah. Go back to that original mistake or crime and try to undo it. There might be some redemption in that. That, to me, is the wrong attitude. Biologist Jim Patton at the University of California, Berkeley, doesn't share Brand's enthusiasm. We're lost uh, unless we realize that we're just a part of this intricate web. And we ought to bring species back if they can help maintain that web. But not because it makes us feel better and sleep better at night. Phelan and Brand estimate it'll take five to $50 million to bring back the passenger pigeon. Where the money tends to be coming in is from people in high tech. They like being on cutting edges, and this is one. Brand believes passenger pigeons could help restore the East Coast forests by spreading seeds around. But the pigeons could end up in conflicts with humans once again, especially if they were listed under the Endangered Species Act. If it's an endangered species, then all of a sudden, all of the forest habitat where it goes into will be off limits to hunting and hiking and biking. Will the people in the East Coast be willing to put up with thousands of pigeons defecating all over everything? 
The enterprise of reviving disappeared species is driven at least in part by the increasing extinction rate that scientists have observed in the past 500 years. At San Francisco's California Academy of Sciences, biologist Jack Dumbacher guards the remnants of extinct animals. There are actually only two keys in this case. I have one and the collection manager has the other. Humans are the reason why species are going extinct at a higher rate. Human population sizes are so big that we're having a huge impact destroying habitat and converting habitat from its natural form into agriculture, to cities, to other things that we use. Climate change is making things worse by turning the oceans inhospitable to coral reefs, for example. Some scientists estimate that if temperatures continue to climb, they could contribute to the disappearance of half the world species. If you've got some ecosystem that we know is collapsing because we've lost some key ecosystem component and we can de-extinct it, why wouldn't we do that? But many biologists believe that efforts should focus on endangered rather than extinct species. It comes down hugely to priorities. If we have these technologies and these technologies can be brought to bear to help preserve what is already here, that's where I would put my resources. At the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, Nola and Angie are two of only seven northern white rhinos left in the world. Poached for their horns, the rhinos are believed to have disappeared in the wild around 2006. At 40, the park's two rhinos have ended their baby-making years, and it's also unlikely that the other five will reproduce either, says zoo geneticist Oliver Ryder. Without some extraordinary intervention, northern white rhinos are doomed. Those extraordinary measures begin with rhino cells stored at minus 250 degrees at the San Diego Zoo's frozen zoo. Scientists have collected cells from 12 northern white rhinos. Using stem cell techniques and in vitro fertilization, they hope to increase the rhino population and its genetic diversity. The frozen zoo holds the cells of 1,000 different species, many of them endangered. With new technologies, these cells could one day become a lifeline. That report was produced by Gabriela Quiroz of KQED Science. You can learn more about how California scientists are trying to bring back long-gone animals. The half-hour documentary Reawakening Extinct Species airs April 23rd at 7.30 p.m. here on KQED.